Chapter 2, Section 3. Life Interacts with Its Environment. Okay. So all life interacts with its environment. You see, every living organism has to acquire energy to create order and maintain homeostasis. So part of acquiring energy is you get that energy from your environment. So you're interacting with the non-living components of the world and also the other living things. These birds right here are long-billed dowagers from North Florida, and they're probing in the sand for all kinds of little micro-invertebrates and worms and crustaceans and things like that, and that's their food. So they're acquiring energy from the environment by interacting with it. On land, every terrestrial ecosystem depends on sun for its energy. So what that means is the energy in you ultimately came from the sun. However, there's an intermediate. You see, there are these plants, and they're called producers. And what they're doing is they're taking energy from sunlight, and they're storing it as potential energy. So they're taking carbon dioxide and water, two simple molecules, and they're using the energy in sunlight, and they're storing it as a carbohydrate that does two things for us. That's where we get our energy from, and we also get all of our organic molecules ultimately come from plants. So every single carbon atom in your body was fixed by a plant doing photosynthesis and using that energy from the sunlight to make that carbon available to you. So plants are called producers. They're not really making energy. Remember that you can't create or destroy energy. But plants make energy available to ecosystems. And they do that through photosynthesis. Therefore, Plants are the base of most food webs. So when you look at La Junta Canyon, this is the southern end of the Sangre de Cristos. If you notice, the forest is full of trees. There's way more plants out there than animals because all the plants, which are the producers, must support all the animals in the ecosystem. So if plants are producers, then animals are consumers. And consumers include things like herbivores, like this caterpillar here, which is eating plants. So herbivores eat plant matter. Consumers are animals that include carnivores, and carnivores basically eat other animals. This long-billed curly right here is eating a crab, and if you watch very closely, he's picking off the claws of the crab, and you can see the claw laying down right there, both of them. And once he gets both of those claws off of it, he will swallow that animal whole. He's about to do it. And hold on. There it goes. And then this bird will then pick up the two claws and swallow them as well. Now, you and I, we are omnivores. So if an herbivore eats plants, a carnivore eats animals, omnivores eat both plants and animals. Humans are a great example of an omnivore. And as you can see, pizza is a perfect diet for an omnivore because if you get meat on it, then you've got meat from like a pig or a bird or a cow. And basically you also have marinara sauce on there, which comes from a plant. And then you have the crust, which is also made from plants as well. So omnivores like pizza because it has stuff from both plants and animals on there. The other part of an ecosystem are the decomposers. Decomposers are things like fungus. And what they do is they break down organic matter and they release those nutrients back into the environment so they can be used again. The vast majority of decomposers on the planet are actually bacteria. And here's why they're important. You have carbon atoms in you that have been around for over 5 billion years. They keep getting recycled over and over and over again. So you have carbon in you that was almost certainly in a dinosaur over 100 million years ago. But the reason why that carbon can stay active, moving from animal to animal, in and out through the ecosystem, is because decomposers will release it back into the environment and then plants make it available to us again. Food chains are simplified diagrams that show the flow of energy and nutrients in an ecosystem. Now for us, in terrestrial ecosystems, all of our energy starts with the sun. Now plants, which are producers, they make that energy available to us through photosynthesis, but not all of it. 
only about 10% of the energy that comes in from the sun is actually stored by plants. Then when an herbivore comes along and eats a plant, only 10% of that energy from the plant that's stored in there goes to the herbivores. And then when there's a carnivore, only 10% of that energy flows from the herbivore to the carnivore. So there's an incredible amount of loss of energy as you go up in trophic level. Trophic level is nothing more than your feeding level. Now what that means is this. Carnivores are rare. So if I have 100 pounds of plant material, at best, I can only support 10 pounds of herbivores and one pound of carnivore. That's why we don't have a whole lot of carnivores in the world. We have way more herbivores, animals that eat plants, and way more plants in the world than there are animals, at least in their total amount of mass. And the reason because most of the energy is lost as you go up the food web or the food chain.